I'm with Victor Pacheco with Promise Technology and we're going to be taking a look at their new V-Track A-Class storage. NAB is brought to you by XFX. Final Cut Pro 10 plugins from industrialrevolution.com. Victor, when I say Promise Technologies people, they're obviously going to recognize the Pegasus R6 and the R4 and the um, solid state ones, the J2. But if people are wanting um, more storage, you've just introduced a new product. And I know seeing the two Mac Minis here, this looks familiar from previous shows. So I was just wondering if you could tell me what you've done with the product. You're right, you're right. Peter, um, first of all, you, you hit those, those right points on the entry level side of the fence. Uh, pro user, prosumer. Yeah, we have the Pegasus, the uh, R4, R6. And by the way, I wanted to tell you one thing. Today we are announcing four terabyte capacity and Windows support right. for Pegasus. Right. So, okay. no, so now, now you're no longer bound to uh, just Mac. You can use it in a Windows environment. And but four terabyte drives. And four terabyte drives. So with a R6, obviously you lose some when with the RAID. So yes. that's going to give a maximum Sub capacity of. Subtract uh, subtract one drive capacity right. for for parity default is RAID five. Right. So uh, okay. So if my maths is right, that's 24 terabytes. Um, they'll be available soon. Um, we're, this month, it'll be available this month. Yeah, that's, a, the, that's a lot of storage down a Thunderbolt cable that yep. sits on your desktop. That's quite a, quite, quite a bit of storage, yes. Brilliant. Okay, so if you want even more storage and you, you want to do shared storage, take us through the development of your, your V-Track. So, as you all know, uh, the V-Track family of products uh, started back a couple years uh, with a joint partnership with Apple. Uh, we came to, uh, to market with our VTrack X10, yep. uh, focused uh, for use with XSAN primarily. Yep. Um, a lot of the users were using the XServe, uh, some of the users are now using Mac Pro for metadata controllers, yep. and most recently uh, the Mac Mini for uh, primary and secondary, and uh, using our SAN link right, to interface into the fiber channel SAN. Yeah. Um, yeah this, this, these are Thunderbolt connectors. Yeah, so here, those yeah. are Thunderbolt connectors, and this goes out. Uh, copper or fiber channel into the fiber channel switch. Yeah. So that's just essentially your typical SAN uh, setup today. Uh, there's also other uh, other uh, approaches like using Stornex, right, yeah. for your primary metadata controller. Yeah. Um, and others like MetaSAN and so on. So our storage has been uh, deployed uh, throughout these years, uh, no problem, and working. The VTrack X10, the VTrack X30, yeah. and now, uh, utilizing the VTrack X30 hardware platform, we've embedded the VTrack file system, or VTrack FS, uh, in the box. So you no longer need to set up a server, primary, and secondary metadata controller. Uh, the metadata storage, uh, you, don't lo you no longer have to uh, you know, put it elsewhere. It can sit in the storage as well, the data storage. And essentially what you have is you have a stand in the box. Right. Um, so you, you've, taken, you've, you've taken all of this and condensed. I mean, a fiber channel switch, these are expensive right. a, a, alone. So you've taken all of this and then put it into... Yeah. So, uh, so the entry level configuration uh, involves essentially 24 drives, single controller. You don't need a fiber channel switch because you could actually connect up to four clients uh, with... Uh, in a, in a in a four client configuration, right? So you don't need to switch now. You can grow from there, add capacity, uh, and you can go ahead and also scale out to add uh, performance. Yeah. Then of course, then you throw in a switch, yeah, a fiber channel switch. Um, all of this today can be managed managed from our web interface, VTrack A Class uh, GUI, and uh, the setup is a cinch. You from a one pain, you can actually download the respective client software, Windows, Linux, or Mac. We support them, right? Yep. And once you have them installed, you open up our wizard. In this case, it's obviously already been configured. Um, this VTrack error node that we have here, essentially we pull the drive out, so that's why it's it's, uh, okay. <laughs> it, it's orange. So it's good to show some level of error, <laughs> right? Um, and from here, you essentially can, can, do, can manage the VTrack A-Class. You can manage the VTrack X30 nodes because it actually works uh, with our existing VTrack X30. Right. Right. Because some of the setup with shared storage, other shared storage, if we look at, say, something like XAM, is pretty complicated. Right. You, you know, you really need to know what you're doing to set it up. So 
somebody with less knowledge could set set this up and get going, especially if it's just a full user. That's right. So yeah, you don't need professional services to set this up. You right. plug it in, you open Bonjour, you find the uh, the VTrack A class, and you open our wizard, you add your clients, and it creates your file system. And when you create the file system, one of the, one of the huge advantages is that we've optimized uh, it by default for video performance. Right. You could either select frame-based or streaming-based uh, configuration, right. click, you're done. Right, so there's no kind of like setting up an X, I'm thinking it's going to be serving a, a banking solution or something like that. It's designed, it's straight out of the box, it's for use with video files, and you would be used to using the, the size of video files. That is correct. So, uh, you know, within our, within our management interface, um, we have a performance monitor to monitor the VTrack file system performance. Also, we can also monitor your VTrack X30 storage uh, nodes. Right. Right. Uh, you can manage. Uh, you can monitor uh, bandwidth. You can monitor controller uh, cache usage, uh, physical drive performance, port performance. I mean, it's all up there. Okay. From one uh, web management interface. All right. Sounds good. What about price and availability? Uh, so availability, tentatively, we're looking at the end of this month. Right. Uh, we're looking at the first SKU that I mentioned, single controller, uh, port clients, you know, entry point. Uh, we're looking around 43, 43K. Right. Uh, the second SKU, we're looking around under 60K ballpark. And there is a third SKU. Well, let me elaborate more on that SKU number two. SKU number two is basically 10 clients, uh, active, active, dual controller. And then there will be a third SKU down the road. And... Um, That'll have essentially uh, 20 clients and uh, SSD for metadata. Uh, as you grow the SAN, the more clients you have, the higher, uh, you know, you need faster response time on the metadata line. Sure. Well, yeah, we're all going 4K at some point, so more data, you know, more volume. So right. I can see more people actually kind of saying we do need shared storage, and it seems like a good entry level, and then you'd be able to build it up. Okay, Victor, thank you very much for your time. Peter, it's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you. See you again. Yeah. NAB is brought to you by XFX. Final Cut Pro 10 plugins from industrialrevolution.com.